Hello and welcome to Science Never Stops. I'm your host, Joseph Vick, with the U.S. Space and Rocket Center. And today's topic is the rock cycle. So before we get started, make sure you bring out your science journal, as I have in front of me. And we'll need to write down and make sure you have your experiment name, which today's experiment title is the Starburst Rock Cycle. Today's date and your name are the other names of the scientists that will be joining you. Now let's talk about some questions. So let's talk about what is a rock? Um, how are rocks formed? Do some rocks transform into other rocks? So I advise you to do some little research. Make sure you go online and look at the picture of the rock cycle. I'll have one to show you that I drew up once we finish the experiment so you see each one of the layers and steps of the rock cycle. But wanted to think of how are rocks formed? What makes a rock? Is the Earth a rock? So all those questions are what you would ask when you were observing and asking questions as part of your scientific method. Now, for our process, we're going to be looking at different rocks and different rock types. I actually have a few examples here. And the first I have here, hold it up closer to the camera. Notice all those little bits and all those little pieces in there. Those are called sediments. And those sediments over time have mashed together, sort of layering one on top of the other. If you've ever been to the Grand Canyon, that's a great place to go and see the layers and layers and layers of sediment packed on one of top of each other. And each one of those layers is another layer of the earth, another layer in geologic time. So sedimentary rock is sediments that have been layered on top of one another and because of that layering and over time they have solidified to form rocks. Now another very common especially in our kitchens and this is a bookmark of mine that you have rock that is sedimentary rock that due to extreme are due to heat and pressure but it doesn't melt it's sort of folded and moved sort of like putty around with the pressures of the earth and inside the earth and it chemically changes to form a metamorphic rock and this happens to be marble and we have it on our countertops and things in our houses but that's the most common of the metamorphic rock types and when marble experiences extreme heat and melting you have igneous rock. So an igneous rock, the most common, is a lava rock that when you have explosive lava erupting out of a volcano going down the side of the mountain and cooling, you have basalt. So I actually have a piece of basalt here. You see the little air bubble pieces there where the hot gas was going out of the rock as it was cooling. Also pumice stones or lava rocks that you can have with any bath and beauty products or for landscaping purposes are really popular uh, types of igneous rocks. But you can't really eat these. They don't taste very good, but you can eat starbursts. So we're gonna do a starburst rock cycle. So we're gonna go through each one of these layers, but I wanted to show you I drew out my experiment set here, and I have the three different experiment setups here on the bottom, which we're going to be doing a sedimentary rock, a metamorphic rock, and an igneous rock example. So we're going to draw these out, and I'm going to go through with you the step-by-step -step for each one. And to do this, you're going to need three starburst candies, one of each color. So I have a dark red, and I have a medium pink, and then a light pink. And then a piece of aluminum foil and then something for a heat source so you can use an iron or you can use what I'm going to use which is the kitchen panini press which works really well but if you don't have one of those in your kitchen you can easily use an iron so the first thing you need to do is open up your starburst you need to open each one of them as you go along and then you need to stack them one on top of the other. So these starburst candies right now are representing sediments 
sediments that have collected over time and have stacked one on top of the other, layering each other on the surface of the earth. And with the assistance of gravity, they have layered one on top of the other. So there we go. That is an example of a sedimentary rock. The stack together, one on top of the other, you can give a little bit of gravity force press. There we go. There we go. And notice they stuck together and they together are a sedimentary rock. One other characteristic of a sedimentary rock is they're easily separated and broken because of those layers. So just like that, just like these candies, I don't do the same. A little bit more uh, gravity putting them together, they're stuck back together. Now, the next rock from this, when you add heat and pressure to this, it can, with inside the earth, create a chemical reaction, and you get a new type of rock called metamorphic rock. And the way you do that, take your candied layer of sedimentary rock, put it in your piece of aluminum foil, so I'm just going to put mine inside. I folded it in half. I want to put it inside the fold. Like that. And I want you to, with extreme pressure, extreme pressure, and with your hands, squeeze, squeeze and press and press and press. And when your hands are pushing like that, that's representing the inside of the earth. So with the inside of the earth, there's extreme pressure. There's some heat with that pressure pushing down on that rock. And with your hands pressing on that aluminum foil, you'll feel the aluminum foil warming up as well. Now that you've had some pressure, you can open up your aluminum foil. Be careful not to tear the aluminum foil, oh, as I just did, but that's okay. And take them out and notice you've had some with pressure and heat, you've had some folding, some major folding and some mixing of those rock types. And you can really tell this mixing and folding if you have a piece of granite uh, on your countertop, you see that really pretty sort of blending of the different rock types from the sediments that were there due to heat and pressure of the earth. And this is a beautiful piece of metamorphic rock. Now, if you add extreme heat and you actually get this rock to melt, you have what's called an igneous rock. So let's do this with extreme heat in the kitchen on the panini press. I'm now in my kitchen and I have turned on my panini press and I've turned it all the way to the max level because extreme heat, think of a volcanic eruption. Uh, and I brought the aluminum foil and I brought the metamorphic rock that we had just made using heat and pressure. And I'm gonna take this and fold it into and over the aluminum foil. Now eventually you have, with metamorphic rock, it will get enough heat and pressure and being pushed within the inside of the earth that it will begin to melt. And with that melting, it will then re-solidify and form the igneous rock. So igneous rock is represented with extreme heat and melting, melting of the metamorphic rock sample into a new type of rock. So we're going to put this in and we had those three layers that looked like it was beautifully marbled, blended together, and we're going to see what extreme heat will do to this metamorphic rock sample. Open up. Extreme heat. We'll let that sit for um let's say a few million years in geologic time, but we'll speed it up here. 
and we'll wait and do it for about a minute or two. All right, it's been a few minutes, and for this part, as it's become rather hot, extreme heat, go ahead and turn off my panini press, but I have my up glove because I know it's going to be hot. And we're going to observe what exactly has happened. Oh, I see. So notice we have some extreme heat and notice that metamorphic rock has completely melted and it smells really good. It smells like melted candy. Now I notice it's sort of flowing still. As you can see that flow would be representative of lava erupting from a volcano. Now I'm going to let this sit out on the countertop and cool. So go back to cooling temperatures and we're going to see what happens when this igneous melted rock has re-solidified. What will happen and what its texture and look will be like. Now I've given our sample time to cool and notice its texture is a little bit different and notice it's very hard. It has what you would say like a and notice it's breaking easily a glass-like feel to it. Now, I say glass-like because there is a type of igneous rock called obsidian, which is volcanic glass. And it's very brittle and glass-like, just like this, and can be very sharp on the edges, just like glass. Now, this type of igneous rock, once it's cool, is very common in various volcanic regions of the earth. And one thing about this rock is now you can eat it. So you can take these little bits and samples and set it on your mouth. And it's very much like, pardon the pun, rock candy. So you can taste your tasty rock cycle. And speaking of rock cycle, I drew out a rock cycle in the shape of a volcano to sort of get the better idea of where the various rocks come from. So let's start at the top of the volcano since we started with igneous rock. So igneous rock at the very top has to have extreme heat and think melting and lava. Lava pouring out of the top of the volcano. Now also when you have a volcanic eruption you have ash. So ash will fall down off the mountain. So let's go, we'll go this direction. I'll go this direction. So let's say that ash that comes down falls back down to the earth and then accumulates on earth's surface. And there were lots and lots of ash deposits. And over time, this volcano erupts several times and you build layer after layer. And with the assistance of gravity, those layers of sediment build up over time and then solidify. Now, when you add heat and pressure to it, with it over time getting pushed into the earth, you have heat of the earth through that pressure, not melting, but folding, chemically changing, all due to pressure. And you have here when we melted and pushed, not melted, but sort of squeezed and pressed our starburst together before we melted them, you have metamorphic rock. That blending and changing and folding. And then you have the melting of the metamorphic rock. And then you have the formation of igneous rock. Now also note the green sections which when it has uplift and erosion, think of when there's an earthquake. If ever there's an earthquake and it unearths metamorphic rock deep within the earth, that metamorphic rock can break into pieces and then form sediment that then builds. Also, igneous rocks, over time when they build up and you have them flowing and they melt, you can have erosion where water or rain will flow over them or wind uh, will cause those to break down and form sediment and build over time to make sedimentary rocks. So the rock cycle in and of itself is ever-changing, ever-moving, 
and all the different rocks are very much related and they can each become the other over geologic time. And geologic time takes quite a while, millions and millions of years. So that's full testament that science never stops.